I have only granted the body a temporal salvation. Are you with me? The body will be released from the prison after tried in the court of law, it might be returned to the prison. That means the salvation was not an eternal salvation. Are you with me? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Okay. What if it was tried at the court of law and I happen to be a very good lawyer? I defended him so well and he was saved from imprisonment completely. Then that is still a temporal salvation because he might still go and commit another crime and they still throw him back there. Amen. That even a lawyer cannot save him at that time. Are you with me? We are talking of salvation and I'm explaining eternal salvation. Amen. Do we all get the glimpse of what we call eternal salvation? Then I think at this point we should know that eternal salvation is only made available to things that are eternal. Amen. Your body cannot be granted an eternal salvation. Are you with me? I told you earlier that your body is temporal, my body is temporal. Then, who can be granted eternal salvation is the soul. The soul abides forever. Are you with me? So we are talking today when we talk about eternal salvation, we are simply talking about the salvation of your soul. Then what are the things we are talking about? We said faith, as I've explained, and faithfulness for our eternal salvation. That means these two, these two things are vital for our complete and eternal salvation. Eternal salvation is a salvation that when you are saved today, you are no longer entangled. That when you are saved today, no law binds you anymore. That when you are saved today, you are not going back to your vomit and go back to live in the past life. And when you are saved today, you can forever be justified before God. Hallelujah. Amen. Is anybody getting what I'm talking about? And we are going to explain this using the story of Apostle Paul. From the Bible reading we all listened to, we heard how the story went. And of late, I've always been telling you about Apostle Paul, generally about the early church, the Christians, how they paid the price with their blood. They did not buy their own salvation with their blood, but many of them gave their lives that the testimony of the gospel might reach us. Apostle Paul was talking in Acts of the Apostle chapter 20. He said he was going to Jerusalem, not knowing what to be falling there. He said because as it was said to him that bondage and affliction are constantly with him. What does that mean? He was given up to the duty completely. Not minding his own life. Not minding what will become of him. He said all these things doesn't move him. He doesn't mind even to go and die. As far as he's concerned, the gospel of Christ must be preached. As far as he's concerned, a generation like us must hear the gospel. And they gave all they could give that the word of the gospel might preach us. This is one of his encounters we are talking about today. We are using this encounter to explain to Ross. This was his last trip, I think, from the scripture when he was sent to Rome. From prison to prison, from Tenio to Tenio, he was still remaining in the prison. A governor left, another one came. He was still remaining in the prison. And he's finally, he was finally sent to Rome to be tried. The angel of the Lord reassured Paul, the apostle, that his journey to Rome would be saved in spite of the storm, challenges and difficulties he was facing in transit. What are we talking about today? The journey of Apostle Paul has read in the Bible reading. It's like him unto our journey, our pilgrim journey on this earth to heaven. Our journey to heaven cannot be without storm, cannot be without tides, and cannot be without things that will distract and those you left and right. 
But as the angel of the Lord assured Apostle Paul that the journey was going to be saved, the Lord is giving you an assurance today that it will preserve you from falling in Jesus' name. Amen. I said it will preserve you from falling in Jesus' name. This promise of safety has earlier been given to Paul by God himself. I'm still talking about Paul now. And look at it from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, verse 22 to 25. Acts of the Apostles, 27, 22 to 25. Then, you know, and the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer. Paul, as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou be a witness also at Rome. Amen. God has assured Apostle Paul from that place, you can read it truly. God has assured Apostle Paul that, okay, you have testified of me in Jerusalem. I told you he was talking about his movement to Jerusalem and said he doesn't know what will become of him there in Jerusalem. He faced a lot of trial in Jerusalem. He was bound, he was arrested, he was, you know, beaten and tortured. But God assured him that you have witnessed me in Jerusalem, you are also going to testify in Rome. That is the first assurance that he was not going to die in the sea. Are you with me? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Listen very well. God has assured him that he's going to testify in Rome. Then God never told him that you're going to perish in the sea. That was the first assurance. That means no matter how tough the tide, no matter how tough the breeze, the wind is, no matter how uh, desperate the storm on the sea is, he has been assured he was going to testify in Rome. That means he's going to get there. Amen. 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 The Lord is assuring us today that we all are going to get to heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. That we all are going to partake of the marriage supper of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's go on. The reaffirmation of this initial promise and message by the angel to Paul during the life-threatening storm on the sea reveals the immutability of God's word. That is, God's word cannot be changed. The, it, it reassures the covenant. It reassures the, the, the certainty of the word of God. Everything changes, but the word of God is forever settled in heaven, like the Bible says. Amen. It never changes. It has a solid foundation that can never be altered. Amen. God reassured him. He said, though over 40 conspirators sought to kill him after that promise, after God told Apostle Paul that you're going to witness me in Rome, some people, some 40 people, they gathered themselves together and said they would not eat or drink until they made sure they kill Apostle Paul. You understand? A lot of things are threatening to take you away from the presence of God. There are some friends among you here, there are some friends you have that have vowed since the day he said to give you a look at him. I give you a month. I give you a year. I give you two years. You will come back to drink with us here. They have said a lot of things concerning you. Maybe that girlfriend that you was a co-fornicator with you, your immoral partner, when you left her because you have given your life to Christ, she will tell her friends, don't worry, leave her alone, leave him alone. Said, I give him three months. I give him one year, he will come back. He cannot do without it. Maybe that boy that you left, when you gave your life to Christ, uh, she's just deceiving herself. Say, is it this one? Ah, no, 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 no. Say, I, gi I give her just some months, just one year. It's going to come back. The Lord is assuring that he is able to preserve you, and he will do it in Jesus' name. He will preserve you completely in the name of Jesus. Amen. All these conspirators, they does, it doesn't matter the number they are. They add everything it takes to put anyone to death. Because they were even acting under some people's instruction. They put their matters in authority. And they are in support of them. If they, put up, if they had put up a support to death, nobody would have held them for that. Because the high priest and all of them are in support of them. You understand what I'm saying? But because their garden is not of God, you know, they will not succeed. 
every conspiracy against you shall be put to naught in Jesus' name. Amen. I said it shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So all these people gather together against him, despite the fact, but because God has promised, his promise 